But with that, Strictly Business find themselves a little hurt because they come in and they lose their first game. I think that's actually their first loss all around. No, I think they have one before this in week four up against Astral Authority. But now both the teams looking to try and retaliate and picks and bans for game number two. And Myth going to be now first pick. Strictly Business opted into second. I'm actually curious as to why Strictly Business would want to go for the second pick, but maybe they feel as though they'd rather look for that initial counter yeah. stage in the picks and bans. It can be a little bit of a benefit having two choices instead of the one, but that just means that Myth is probably going to get their ideal selection of whatever they want. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Sobek for them. Yeah, honestly, at this point, they're comfortable. We have the Amus and Cobb and the Kakulin come out, pretty much the two that Myth has been able to show. Kakalin is just strong and has been strong by a lot of these solo laners, but Amuz and Cobb has been specifically Keegs going through. And Geb, that's a no-brainer for them. They won it. Inbound did really well. He was able to keep control, and he had a lot of shields, but mainly the blink, cla blink cataclysm coming through that really set up the rest of the team. I think that's something else I would like to see from Shitney Business this game is put a little bit more pressure onto that Geb early on. I don't feel as though Inbound was really getting pressured out or forced out of fights all that often. He had a couple of spills, but it, it didn't really have anything too impactful. The The main thing is he was able to get online with those Geb shields and having that massive health bar to stack on top of a Sirkat who's diving you, really hard to handle. I'm looking to go in Kernanos Ganesh this time, and it's still going to be pretty strong for them. That's honestly one of the one of the dual lanes I can guarantee a lot of people would never want to see if they were looking down that lane. But instead of going for the Raijin this time, they're opting into the Vulcan. I love the Vulcan. If there is one god that screams Baronic, it is the Vulcan. And his Vulcan is insane. That is a scary pickup. Ganesh, one more time, going to provide some excellent support setup for it as well. Just getting that slow off of the Dharmic Pillar, it means that you're not going to be able to freely jump on top of the Vulcan. And plus, having that Earthshaker is also going to prevent the Sirket commit. Going in this time for the Bologna, probably going up against the Osiris. going to be a nice throwback at this point to what we used to see in the solo lane. Thoth on the one side for Myth, going to be locked in as their mid laner. And they have a lot of damage, but I like the fact that Myth has changed up their strategy coming into this to be able to adapt for what Strictly Business has either left open or what they've picked, because now the Osiris, the Scotty, the Thoth, both going to be different. All three going to be different, but still have a pretty big impact in the game. There is so much AoE for Myth, though, and they've got a lot of long-range potential thanks to that, Thoth, and I, I do not want to deal with the Scotty, with the Gevel. It, it's just a lot to be combined on top of each other. That really seems to be the main game plan here for Myth Gaming, is just combining everything all at once. And a lot of things that, as a player, kind of irks you. You have to deal with Scotty, you have to deal with Geb, <laughs> and you just know that it's, it's going to be kind of a mental factor coming in for Strictly Business. I'm sure they're going to be able to keep their composure coming forward with it, but it's always one of those when you've lost a game and you're coming into the next one and you know... Man, they have a bunch of abilities I always hate dealing with. Like, I have to deal with it a lot this game as long as we want to win. So coming into it, Myth might be able to kind of play to that. Well, Keeg's trying to give Fatal Ghost a little taste of his own medicine. <laughs> and having this Scotty also means that Keeg's is probably going to be A-OK -okay by himself. Won't be losing his buffs, hopefully, to invades from Strictly Business. And earlier on last game, we saw Keeg's kind of fall behind. It was a little rough for him in the dual lane. But slowly but surely, he was able to kind of catch up and then overcome on the other side. It might be a little different since it's up against the Karnanos, but now that he has the Scotty, he's going to be a little bit more comfortable all around the board just to try and keep himself ready to go as the damage is coming through. Baronic actually eating a lot, but he gets the initial clear, and that's really what his team needed. And that's actually expected to be in favor of Baronic and Matt Coys, just because Thoth and Ganesh are basically always going to outclear a Gev and a Thoth, excuse me, the Vulcan and Ganesh. The way it's been going. Matt Coy has a lot of potential to set up. He had a lot of it last game as well, where he was able to come through and do a lot for his team. But the problem is, I think, eventually he was more, again, reactionary instead of the one who was being aggressive. He wasn't setting up the kills as much as it was. He was having to run away because he was the kill getting set up. And I think that was part of the problem. Strictly Business can maybe use an early lead the way they had last time, but not get so aggressive they end up throwing it and not so 
passive that they end up not using it. They might be able to do it, but Keegs is coming around the back line and he wants blood. And he's going to find it. Baronic forced to use those purification beats, just not enough range from Crimson to find that first blood. But Fatal Ghost now, he's going to be dancing around on that permafrost, not by choice. Keegs may and Fatal Ghost both exchanging a couple of blows and opting to back off from each other. But ultimately, Myth, I think, comes out a little bit on top just because Baronic's not able to farm the way he would like. He's now pushed back under his tower, and if he takes any two steps forward, he'll end up paying for it. But health pots at this point in the game, they're really helpful because they can get you back to close enough to full that you'll be comfortable. We're only at level three, and with only two minutes in, it's not going to be such a huge tide-turning swing that Baronic is left out of this land. Baronic, though, he can't feel comfortable in this mid lane knowing that he's against the Thoth because of that stun that Crimson could potentially look for off of that dash. And if he's able to find a stun onto Baronic, there's a high likelihood that Jumpa will immediately follow up that opportunity. Oracle's grabbed no problem by Myth at that point. They're going to have that free vision over the Gold Fury Pit. Not as much for the vision as much the farm at this point. Take it away from Strictly Business. Give yourself a little bit of a lead and trying to find even more of a lead. They're going to be going for the solo lane right now. Bludgeon coming down. Not going to be able to connect, but Jumpa still picks up that last auto. Caden trying to find some sort of retaliation, but he's still in a 1v2 and still going to be forced back. It's the shell. The shell tried to buy him so much time, but now Jumpa's hit level five. You saw the echo in by Caden. Really wanted to look for possibly even a jump stun there. Jumpa goes in. Unfortunately, doesn't get the kill. Fortunately, does get the beads. Either way, he's going to come out with a win on that one. And Caden actually decided to stick around. Looks like he's going to continue trying to go forward and end up fighting. He's taking a little bit more damage than he would really like. Not able to dish out anything. And we have Jumpa and Delny stuck in a position where they're pretty comfortable. They're going to be able to farm up these fire arms and return to the lane pretty happy. Caden, it was just too unfortunate that he hit level five a second behind when Jumpa was looking to escape from that tower. And now that just means that Ryan Jarman's death will go unanswered and mid gaming will be happy to collect that first blood bounty. Looking to go up to four minutes, still super early in the game, but we do have a blink once again on inbound, which I think can be the tide turner. Opting into the beads this time is Jumpa, not getting quite as aggressive. I think he realized how much utility he actually got out of the, the blink. Decided, okay, maybe we don't actually need this. You just don't go blink against the Fenrir. I, I think that's yeah. the main thing. If, if it was any other jungler, well, I can't say any other, because Naja is also a possibility, but a any jungler that can't immediately force out your relics at level five, most junglers will feel pretty comfortable going an aggressive relic such as Blink, but Fenrir is like the guarantee that's how you die every time. And looking to try and avoid that as much as possible. Caden not having his ult available just yet, but still going to be looking for blood. And that's going to be the same case for in the mid lane. Crimson has to deal with the fact that Fenrir more than likely will be hung uh, hanging around there, trying to keep him under control. And Delny a prime target just because he doesn't have the beads. But Delany does have that Lord of the Afterlife. The CC immunity should be enough to at least let him escape. But if Caden is able to find him with that ultimate off cooldown because Delany wants to play over aggressive onto Ryan Jarman, that's always a high possibility. Jump a lane and wait. Caden actually going to be the one he's aggressing into. We're going to have Baronic get thrown, but he's not going to have a lot of damage dumped down on him. Darmic Pillars coming Oof. through. The shot comes down, but only on the inbound. The stun is good from Caden. He could continue the aggression. They're going to fall back, and they're not going to be able to get the kill. Brutalize must have been on cooldown there from Caden. He had a great jump stun on top of inbound, but not anything else to follow it up with. Baronic was pushed so far back as well. And Crimson probably kicking himself for that final judge and just being slightly off the mark. Can't blame him, though. That was from way downtown. Looking to try and find their aggression right back into it. Strictly business. I like the fact that they have the fight there. I like the rotations they had come out. Dropped a lot just to get nothing out of all of it. Oracle Harpy spawned back up. That's going to be the big contestion point for the two teams. But ultimately, it's at this point for the Vision, trying to get both. They're going to be able to go down. Looks like it's going to get split down the middle. And Jumbo going to get aggressed on Caden, though, taking a lot of damage because of it. And he's going to get taken down by Crimson. The aggression potentially still coming out from inbound as he gets aggressive. But Delny came out, and they get a 2 for 0 trade just because of the solo. And Fatal Ghost actually having to use his wild hunt. Still not safe, though, from Keegs. Man, Keegs wants this. He had the cleanse. Oh, he might have overstayed it. Oh. No, the Gap Shield is actually going to save Keeks' life. But that was an insane ultimate from Baronic either way. 
that's a clinch moment right there. That is a, <laughs> oh man, I am about to die. You could make diamonds out of the stress I have right now. But he's going to be able to live, although here's the, the problem. The one more wave uh -oh. syndrome. Matt Coyce comes in, Darmic Pillars. <laughs> that's all he needs. Sometimes you overstay your welcome after you overstayed your welcome. And now he's just a, a nasty visitor. That I was waiting to see if he would try and be the, the double kill slayer with the Ganesh, but wasn't able to find anything else on inbound afterwards, and Fatal Ghost just got back to lane, so he wasn't there to assist his support either. Keegs, though, probably just super sad that he actually did end up dying. After all of that, inbound did everything in his power to <laughs> save his hunter. And Keeks might still kill himself. Kind of makes me wonder what Inbound might have had to say about that one. He's like, come on, man. Like, you had to go for the other wave, didn't you? Like, you just had to sit here and be a little bit greedy trying to get the gold. That's my way. <laughs> that is the pure hunter mentality. He could not let Inbound just free farm that one by himself. <laughs> you, you've got to be there. You've got to take it. Or else you BM your support every time. All I can remember is just, and several, I mean, across the board, ADC commands, you do exclamation point, one more wave, and it comes up. Blink is about to die, because tends to be what happened when you stay, as right now, just blown off the map is Baronic. Jumba gets credit for it, but Final Judgment had an equal play in that, and Matt Coy's it's a little cheeky stun at the very end to show him that it still has the aim. I'm fairly confident that Veronix Purification Beads also just came back up off cooldown, which is why we didn't see him trying to use them to cleanse that Cobra's Kiss from Jumpa. Unfortunate for him. At least he has them for the next fight, so I guess there's a bright side as long as he looks at it that way. Otherwise, you look at it and you see your team's down 4-1. Only a 1,000 gold difference between the two teams at eight minutes now, so it's not a big lead for Myth just yet. Well, they're putting themselves in a position to continue that aggression. They found some solo kills across the map, and they found the aggression. They know they can keep Strictly Business pushed back. And poor Ryan Jarman. He ended up getting solo by Delany, so now he's got to face the spam laps and taunts for it. These two have always loved boxing against each other in the solo lane, but Dalany probably having the more favorable matchup as far as counter counters are concerned. And honestly, being able to have Jumpa right in the jungle waiting maybe to come in and fight, but ultimately going to end up having to call that one a cancel just to come through, looking to try and group up. They don't want to put too much into the solo lane and lose the gold fear because of what I just saw. Oh, Caden jumps in. in. He's going in for the fight. Delny sitting at about half health. The same thing can be said for Ryan as they want to go, but they're not going to be able to find it. Delny a little bit too safe. And on the other side, everything bouncing back and forth between the two teams. These teams have really loved trying to split up their aggression on the map. As soon as they see that one of their members is getting attacked on one side, they immediately look to go in on the other. Oh, but that bludgeon! Caden picked him up with the Ragnarok and put him out of the bludgeon aim. That feels bad. That, that one's just a rough combo that comes down when you don't have the communication from your team and not being able to go for it. Now Caden looking like he might pay for it. He's going to have the Cobus Kiss come through. He's going to be taking down damage, but he's still a little healthy, still able to live a little bit. Shell being a saving grace to eat some of that. And because of the big input over there on the right-hand side, Strictly Business make the smart call, and that's a free Gold Fury. And that was a great execution by String Business as well. Delany, though, won't be leaving it completely unanswered. It manages to find Ryan Jarman in the end. And I believe that was actually a 2v1 because Caden was there by his side. Uh, unfortunately, no mana for the Fenrir. He's a good dog, but he's not going to be able to do as much as he would like. Forced to fall back 5-1 to one now in favor of Myth Gaming. But the gold, not quite as much as you would like. It's now under 1,000, which for Strictly Business is the best sign they've had all game. They've only been able to pick up one kill. They haven't been winning team fights the way they would want. But as long as they can keep up the farm and as long as they can keep up map control, that's what eventually will win them the game. And Myth Gaming have to be careful now. They can't allow any more free Gold Furies to Strictly Business if they want to maintain their lead and map pressure in this game. Gold Fury being down just means that the next target's going to be looking for members. Great execution so far. Excellent taunt to get Caden to back off by Jumpa. And I like the shield coming through. Inbound just showing he's paying attention, making sure to keep everyone as healthy as possible. It's already saved Keegs once. Can't save him twice as many times as it comes through if you end up overstaying it. But being able to apply that to Jumpa, to Crimson, to keep the rest of the team just alive enough that they might be able to turn some of those tides. Keeping a heads up play. Doesn't have the blink available though. Jumpa, Jumpa wants to fight. Jumpa wants to fight, but he's by himself. Caden, though, going to end up picking up inbound in the end. He's level 8, though. Caden's level 10, but it's a gap. He's just going to cataclysm and knock up, roll on out of there. 
Ultimately, Jumpa looking for the aggression, gonna end up going for the blue buff steal. And they're gonna be leaving that one left on the ground as it comes through. The aggression coming out from Strictly Business. They want to push as hard as they can. They want to try and fight back. They want the retaliation. They just don't have the leg in. And Bludgeon has been one of the big ones. When it hits, it's been great for Ryan to be able to turn around and start fighting Delny. But it's missed too many times. What's important here, though, is Portal Demon has just recently spawned. Strictly Business, we've already seen how quickly they can take down objectives just thanks to Baronic and those turrets. Vulcan, probably one of the best mages when it comes to securing objectives and just taking them out. And a lot of things that people tend to underestimate, because a lot of times you have to choose who's going to tank this. If you get low health, it gets a little precarious. You have to leave an objective that you wouldn't otherwise. Turrets are really good for that. You can let them tank up a little bit of damage for you. You might end up losing them and not getting as much damage as you would like, but if you are low, if you need to play it safe, you might be able to go through. Is Jumpa going to get chased down right now? Tossed back is Caden to keep Jumpa alive, and that's just good reaction time. That was a great ultimate there from Jumpa, but he's going to miss having that at his disposal. Now instead, it's going to be Caden being forced to back off because Delany popped those thorns, expecting a lot of aggression from Strictly Business. On one side, it's nice because he deters the aggression. On the other side, he uses his thorns, so he's going to be rough without that one for a little bit because that's going to be part of what makes him a big impact on these games running in and being able to eat that damage or at least stop that damage from coming out. Right now, it looks like Keeg's trying to do whatever he can to do what Keeg's does coming through and try to get aggressive as a Scotty, but unfortunately, no one's going to lock him down. Circular Business, they had a good opportunity to. They get the beads, and Keeg's is going to be able to walk away. For Matt Coys, though, he's probably more than happy to have secured that Scotty's beads because Fatal Ghost has an opportunity now to catch him off in the Wild Hunt. There's also the Dharmic Pillars that could slow him down. Speaking of which, Delny still has his horrific emblem up, so if he gets Ryan Jarman low enough, I can definitely expect to see him popping that. Looking to try and back. Delny actually going to get aggressive and force Ryan to continue fighting. I was waiting to see if Ryan was going to try to go all in. He did have the ability to come through with the stun, potentially try to get a lot of combos down, but ultimately he decides against it. He is sitting down two levels, so it's going to be rough. And 0-3 right now with a few of those going on the way of Delny. So ultimately he's just trying not to fight as much as he can. Crimson. It's been relatively quiet this game since that start, and... It's kind of just to be expected from a Thoth. But speaking of which, Fatal goes actually managing to find Keegsman in the dual lane with a little bit of assistance from his jungler. Yeah, being collapsed on, it looked like Keeks. He recognized, he saw Matt Coy's in Fatal Ghost there, and he ends up going in just trying to farm. But unfortunately, I don't think he realized how many people are able to get in there. Now loses the tower because of it as well. Portal Demon started up by Myth, though, immediately making the call. They recognize we'll lose a tower. We might lose some farm in the jungle. Let's go ahead and do whatever we can to try to own this up. But the problem is, Matt Coy's is around the corner. Inbound's really low. There comes the Vulcan ult. It's not going to find the kill, but it gets them off the Portal Demon. Inbound is just praying right now that nobody walks around this corner, but it is going to be Matt Coys instead who finds him, not opting to back up a little bit further into his own jungle, so the Geb's going to go down for it. Lazy backing hurts sometimes. You need to recognize when you need to get out of there at inbound. Fortunately for him, is going to leave his team exposed because of it. Tier 1 in the mid, not necessarily a large target. There's still a lot of damage on Myth to be able to deter strictly business. But there's a lot of farm on the map for Strictly Business to go to. There's the Gold Fairy, there's the Portal Demon, there's Mid Harpies. And if they were really, really brave, there's a Fire Giant. But that one's just not going to be the call. Gold Fairy is the smart one. They're going to try to get the lead, but they do have to deal with the final judgment. But they have to worry about trying to out-secure Baronic. It is going to be Gold Fury in favor of Strictly Business, even though Jumpa tried to jump in to save it. Keeg's mate, though, trying to put some aggression out onto Kaden. But that call there is not going to be able to do enough by himself. They're going to be able to walk away now. Not necessarily a free Gold Fury, although they actually get more out of it than they would have wanted. They get the ult from Crimson and from Keegs, as well as the Gold Fury, and they pull themselves even further into the lead. It's not a large lead for Strictly Business, but with what they were working with earlier on, they now have 5-3, to three, so they've been able to pick up two kills since then, and they've been able to kind of turn the tide of the game back in their favor. Managing to swing things a, a decent bit, actually, ever since that initial pick onto Keeg's mate, but not much that Keeg could have done. That tower dive and the commit by Caden only happened because of the fact that Keeg's had his purification beats forced out earlier on. So anytime that someone from Myth loses those beats, you can just expect Caden to probably make an appearance shortly after. 
And from the way the last game went, these teams do like kind of the slow burn up until the point where all of a sudden they're going to be able to kind of pull themselves ahead. And a lot of that was on the back of inbound being able to set it up. Jumpa looking for maybe some more aggression. Matt Coys might not be the one he wanted to go for, but he will be looking for that damage anyway through the wall. Crimson trying to get those last couple hits. They're both going to walk around with about one-fourth HP. I think Delny hesitated for a moment on whether or not he should actually use his ultimate there to try and catch Matt Coys. And if Coys hadn't popped the sprint, Delany will most likely commit. He might have felt as though he just barely got out of range in time to escape that initial stun, or root, I should say. Now, Myth are in a weird position. They're not really far behind. They haven't been winning the team fights the way they would want, though. And even when they do get aggressive, like there, they aren't able to clean up the damage that they're able to do. So Strictly Business walks away again happy because they just eat two ultimates and they don't die for it. No one gets lost. They still hold a lead, although it's not as big. And that gives Strictly Business the ability to get aggressive somewhere else. And now Keek's mate looking like he's going to end up paying for it. Jukes away from safety. There's no tower there to keep him alive. So ultimately, he knew he was going to get chased. There's only so many places that Keeks can try and run to when he's by himself in the duo lane. Caden not hesitating one more time because there's no T1 tower and Keeks was pushed all the way up without any wards other than the one on the top and corner of the Gold Fury. Jumpa gonna blink in as he did pick that up at level 12, but it's not going to accomplish anything with the aggression coming through. He does maintain his ultimate right now and running into the jungle might recognize there's gonna be two familiar faces looking down the red buff at him, but they're gonna be going oh. in, misses the jump, but I believe that was the beads coming out from Fatal. Fatal goes there, kind of expecting the Sir Ket taunt to come into play, and instead it's going to be on the bottom end side where a lot of emphasis is being put onto Ryan Jarman, but inbound and Jumpa both eating that Vulcan ultimate. Jarman doing his best to get away as we see just the chase down coming through. Delny's going to be able to keep himself alive, but it opens up the tier one tower. Matt is going to hold that until the minions are safe. Now the damage is going to be coming through. Final judgment goes on. That's not going to do a lot. As Caden, actually, the stun is the better part. He's still going to be able to stay alive. They get the tier one. They're going to be able to turn that aggression elsewhere. Maybe not to the portal demon, maybe into a bait as Keeg's mate going to be coming around and looking right down the lane at the McCoys. Calls it, and they're going to go ahead and fall away. Crimson was able to deal so much damage, but he was the only member pretty much still left to try and contest. Now Keeks is trying to pull this portal demon by himself. He does have the Devourer Gauntlets and the Executioner. It's helping him as far as sustain is concerned, but it's still not quite enough. So Inbound is going to try and lend him a hand here. Coming on in, Matt Coy still hanging around the side, though. Dark Pillar is going to be coming through, looking to try and get the steal. Not going to be able to secure it for himself, but he does keep damage and lockdown on the side of Myth to force them to fall back right after they grab this objective, which puts his team in a good position to potentially push forward into the Fire Giant if they want to. But ultimately, just looking at the map, they want to fall back, they want to spend some gold, and just accept the fact that they lost that one. Jumpa and Delany just wanted to zone for as long as possible, and as soon as Myth was able to secure that portal demon, immediate disengage. That's all that they needed to happen. Inbound went forward just a little bit to reassure his team that he had the shields just in case something were to happen, but preferably Myth Gaming just want to get out as soon as they secured that. Now kills five to four. Not a lot being picked up on the side of Myth across this game. They were able to get some early on, but it's slowly but surely trickled down, and they haven't been able to get that aggression in the lockdown that they wanted to. And a lot of that has been partially the fact that they haven't been able to find that aggression, and also just the fact that Strictly Business have been reacting almost immediately to that aggression. Anytime it does happen, inbound or jumpa haven't been able to lock down the same way they were early on. And poor Keegs, though, representing. Oh, hold that thought. It's going to be inbound, actually, looking for the aggression. On to Barani. Dharmic Pillar's trying to buy him some time, but Crimson able to Aegis it out and take out the Lang Vulcan. Going to be able to try and turn that damage around. Jumpa, unfortunately for him, did dash through the Dharmic Pillars right into Baronic's ult. Takes a little bit of damage because of it, but he's going to be happy with it. Ryan rotating over him and Delny just going to continue the solo lane slap fight in the mid lane as the stun going to come through. A little bit of damage from the Thoth trying to help turn the tide in favor of one, but ultimately Strictly Business recognize the way things are going, they're going to fall back because they don't have Baronic. And that's a big call for Crimson and Keegs to go for this Gold Fury. And this is the problem that Strictly Business are encountering. They were 
winning the team fights, I would say. The engagements were all in their favor, but the zoning by Myth and the objective secure as well has just been in their favor for the past few minutes, getting the portal demon and now the gold fury putting themselves back on top and in control of this game. And Kingsmate at this point has hit pretty much where he would want to be in any game. He's able to go through and start dealing the damage that his team would need to the objectives as Caden's going to come through and go for Delny, but he's taking a lot of damage in return because of it. Thorns has been popped. The slow is good, but it's not going to be enough to find the kill. But there's just another example. The control coming down from Myth is all that matters. And check out that map awareness. Keegs is just solo pushing in the left-hand side. Delany just buying them so much time, running around the backside. Jump is going to come into the mix as well. They're actually going to take out Fatal Ghost. Caden one shot away, not going to connect, unfortunate for Crimson. As it looks like he wanted to go for the stun, he wanted to try to make the play, but he's going to put that on to Baronic. Tier 2 in the left, taken down by Keeg's mate, who's going to rotate over on into the mid lane. And now Baronic and Ryan, they're alone here. But Keeg still wants to hunt, still wants to put that pressure down. He's going to be going in with Crimson to help him in the back line. And his wing blade proc, I believe, is going to actually assist him in chasing down Baronic. Ryan Jarman not really expecting that one to come through, but now Keeg's mate having to use that Aegis just to try and get away. I like the team holding up. Crimson and Jumpa coming back in just to make sure that Keeg's mate doesn't go a little bit too far, a little bit too hard, as he did take a lot of aggressive positioning there to get in and get that kill, but he comes out ahead because of it. Now they've got the two towers on the left-hand side and a couple of kills under their belt to continue pushing forward. And Keeg's mate, though, easily recognizing just how much damage he can actually do and utilizing it to its fullest potential by taking out Baronic, only putting the mid laner even further behind. And Crimson's already level 19 in comparison to Baronic 16. Stuck in a rough spot. Baronic has had a lot of opportunity and not a lot to really showcase what Vulcan can do in these kinds of scenarios. A lot of the time, Myth has kind of prioritized him specifically because I think they recognize what he can do. We've seen the damage that can come down from the ult. We've seen him spread it but it just hasn't been enough for his team to come through and pick up the kills, and they all tend to fall back once he ends up taking the spill. That's the thing, though, is that Myth have just spread Strictly Business so thin in every single one of these engagements lately that Strictly Business have just been unable to follow up on their mid laner's damage. Veronic has been putting in work when it comes to connecting his abilities and his ultimate, more importantly, but there's just no one left standing to try and make anything out of it. Unfortunately for Strictly Business, relying so heavily on being able to kind of get things done in a grouped manner like that had put them kind of behind, unfortunately for them, once Baronic takes the spill. And now, as it looks like Ryan or potentially Fatal Ghost is Delny and Jumpa fighting as best they can. Although they're left alone over in the mid lane, Keegs is split pushing right now, and they're the distraction that he has needed to be able to get that tower. That patience by Fatal Ghost, though, to not use his purification beads there. That's all he was waiting for. But now they're going to be forced out because the Cobra's Kiss Commit has come through. Keegs made able to find Caden in the mid lane, and the battle's not over just yet on the back harpies. Jumpa going to end up taking a spell. Delny now stuck between the pillars and and the team, but ultimately he's going to be able to walk out of this one. He's still alive, still healthy, not going to be able to pick up that speed buff, was grabbed by Ryan Jarman just because why not? When it came down, he knew it was going to get stolen away, but that leaves it open. While they were able to get Jumpa, they lose Caden. The portal demon's open, and Ryan Jarman actually going to get caught there by the permafrost. Not going to end up taking the spill because of it. The portal demon hovering around. Going to be able to get the kill is the side of Myth, and now Jarman in a rough spot. And another great ultimate by Baronic, but there's nobody to look for Delany on the backside. Crimson, though, return fire. Mid laners are just connecting all over the place, and Ryan Jarman's down for the count. Baronic right until that moment he's like all right let's fight we can get in we can do this I'm Vulcan I'm late game I've got the build that I need to be able to at least hit hard enough to kill off Jumpa to kill off Keegs or Crimson and then immediately he's like all right we need to go we need to get on out of here and run as fast as we can now Matt Coy's looking to potentially get caught out the stun gonna be coming through the slow is gonna be coming through dumping a lot of damage just to get rid of the elephant but they put themselves in a good position to bait out Caden who comes in uses the brutalize and just misses it was actually the meatball that knocked Jumpa out of range for Caden. I believe that Brutalize would have connected had it not been for that. And then he would have just followed Jumpa along for the ride on that knockup. Still, strong showing from Myth Gaming. 
One more time, really looking to close out this set for themselves. Yeah, taking the Fire Giant in that last little bit of a distraction, which is exactly what Jump has been doing this entire time. He's been going through as the Blink Cataclysm comes in, and they're going for the aggression on the Phoenix. They're not going to hold back this time. Myth, we're waiting around on it, and in the back line, it is going to be big for Thoth to be able to get that final judgment. He's charging it up. He's looking for the shot. Ooh. He finds Caden, and he almost bursts him down to the death, but that's going to be Jump up picking up one kill. Fatal Ghost taking the spill right after. Veronic is low. Matt Coys is low. And Caden forced to run right back into the base. The Phoenix takes the spill. That stun onto Fatal Ghost just spelled out his destiny. Crimson finding all of these range, max range abilities and just really using this Thoth to his advantage and to his team's advantage. Myth Gaming have just been able to punish Strictly Business so heavily for their hesitation. They're looking to be able to go in and get rid of this middle Phoenix. Matt Coy is trying to defend. The big ult from Vulcan comes through. Delny going to take half the health he had remaining. But unfortunately, there's still no follow-up coming from the rest of the members to be able to clean any of these kills up. Now Delny's going to be pretty much healed back up to where he was when he first got hit. And the middle Phoenix is going to take the spill. That's going to be the disengage for Myth. They're a little bit too low to feel too comfortable all across the board. But they still have objectives. They still have farm and buffs that can be taken while they retreat. Strictly the Business are really just missing the damage of Fatal Ghost right then and there, but really not much that they could have done because Fatal Ghost had absolutely no control. Once you get caught up by that Thought Stun, there's just nothing left for you to hope for as far as escaping is concerned. And being able to play that appropriately, we saw actually at the beginning of that fight, Crimson, while he wasn't doing a ton while his team went in, he was sitting in the back line waiting for knowing where he needed to apply that damage. So watching as the health bars got low so he could turn around and then start taking those shots. And taking those shots is what he did, helping to kind of keep swinging the tide in his favor. And the difference between him and Crimson at this point, or him and Baronic, has been that there's follow-up for his ult. And that's probably the primary difference between these two teams is that as much as Strictly Business wants to follow up and look for the all-in commit, they just can't. Inbound is preventing his teammates from dying for the most part, or at least his carries. They can't get anywhere near Crimson. He already has insane range thanks to that hieroglyphic wall. And when you toss out the fact that he can just hide behind a Geb and an Osiris, good luck. You know, Cyrus at this point, Delny, doing pretty much everything his team has ever needed him to, just being the frontline tank that eats all the damage and is the distraction. He is the one who they keep dumping so much into, but he just shrugs it off as now Myth, they're looking for their final Phoenix, and honestly, there's not a lot Strictly Business can do about it as Matt Coy is immediately stunned out and takes half his health. Crimson just charging up that ultimate, really just trying to remind Strictly Business that that final judgment is ready <laughs> to end it all for them. Third bird down on the list. Fire minions pouring in in the mid and the right as they come through. Solo and the ult's coming down. It's going to be big for Baronic, but it's not enough again to follow it up. They finally take care of inbound, but the rest of the team is left alive and dealing damage. They're going through. Caden in the back line, taking from the poison. One more hit is all it will take from one big ability, but he's going to be able to jump and try to dodge that one out. 28 minutes in. The stun over the wall is good to hit Matt Coy's, and Fatal Ghost takes a lot of poke. And at this point, Myth, they're just kind of toying with their food. That was only two shots, and it put Fatal Ghost under half health. Veronic doesn't even get a chance to make it back to the Fallon. Keegsman going to take him out. Now Fatal Ghost trying to answer the boxing match against Keegsman, but it's not going to be good enough. Delany got that tether off on him. Delany took Fatal Ghost out. Three is a magic number. That's all they need to kill to be able to take down the Titan Myth. Come through with a swift 2-0 there in the second game. 29 minutes as they closed that one out. And they did not care that Strictly Business was seated higher than them going into that. They wanted to show them that they've been working hard. Myth Gaming, formerly known as In Memory of Michael, one more time for those of you back at home who might have missed it. They are really showing themselves as a team to be reckoned with. And I, I think it's fair enough to say, especially after a very clean performance from them, that they are looking ready to go for the LAN. Yeah, and being able to show their strengths and show that they, even though maybe had a couple of swaps throughout the season <laughs> and have shown that there was some weaknesses, they're ironing them, that, they're ironing them out and being able to go forward. And Crimson, I think, was a big back on that one, especially in that game as Thoth. A lot of damage came down as him. Oh, that gameplay by Crimson was great, but of course, you also have to credit his teammates for that. You can't have all this free casting of Thoth abilities unless you have a team to really set you up for it. And it's not so much the setup as much as it was just the initial peel, the initial protection. He just knew that he was safe. 
and the shield he needed to be able to stay in the back line. A lot of these times, he goes untouched throughout these team fights just because no one's able to get to him right there. Delny, we see in the front with inbound, making sure to keep him safe. He's still able to come out. And because the range addition from the glyph, he's just pouring the damage in. Really like that above pickup for game number two. And I think that Myth Gaming did an excellent job drafting around their composition. They played to their strengths. And even though I think the Strictly Business had a couple of opportunities to turn it around, I think it was mostly a drafting issue as opposed to a team fighting or mechanical error kind of problem. Yeah, pretty much everything coming down, looking strong from both sides. But ultimately, we do see Myth coming out a little bit stronger. And it's just one of those things that finally showing themselves to, to break into those top teams instead of being the one that has a lot of potential. And they're finally able to break <laughs> forward. I'm sure that they're feeling pretty happy <laughs> about that one, though. Securing those final three points just going to bump them up a little bit more in the seeding, which is something that teams are really looking for, considering that that land really isn't that far away. Yeah, but that's number four of the day. We still have number five here for the console league. One more to go into. We'll take a short break before we get into that.